so what we're talking about today is we've been screwing around with uh, containerizing Nextcloud. And while we have a relatively rudimentary version, uh, thanks to um, uh, what we decided it was, um, NL Hackem, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we had some, some nice progress on the containerized uh, version of it. Um, but what we want to do is move that to OpenShift. And what I wanted to kind of go through today was the highlighting some of the changes we need to make to make that happen in OpenShift. Um, so we're going to kind of do a blend of doing that in, excuse me, command line, uh, which the thing about OpenShift and Kubernetes by extension, you could do basically everything on the command line, um, but you have to do a ridiculous amount of YAML. Uh, and so, because I have a high propensity of failure with YAML, I decided to uh, do a bunch of stuff with console or with the uh, web console as well. Um, so yeah, moving on. Um, so we're going to start pretty easily in that we're gonna uh, just kind of create a new project uh, to do this uh, work. And please, as usual, ask questions as we go. Yes, I need um, to drop that uh, short code real quick. Feel free it. to ask any container-related question. We are here for you. Right, right. Um, this is one of the weirdest things for me is um, the new app and new project are like a different syntactically than everything else you create in OpenShift because you usually use the create command. Mm. Um, yes. So I invariably will, my fingers will type OC, create project project name almost every single time and i really have to like think about it to uh not screw it up um but so i have okay so just by way of a little bit of context so i'm running uh as we've talked about in the show in the past i'm running crc which is code ready mm -hmm. containers which is a way for you to run your OpenShift on your laptop I actually have this running on a server in my basement and basically doing some redirections so that I can get to it from kind of anywhere in my house. Um, uh, Sage tunnels or? No, actually I'm using a HA proxy. So okay, what I do cool. is I yeah. actually have a VM that's mm -hmm. running CRC, which is also a VM. So you need to make sure that uh, nested KVM is turned on. There's a font color change request. Oh, which uh... Uh, I think maybe it's the... Uh, of the terminal? Of the terminal, or? yes. Yeah. Um, we go through this all light. the time. I keep, I it's, I keep, yeah, it's very I light. Um, try to remember how to do it. <clears throat> so let's see. It's telling me it's black, right? That's weird. It yeah. is not coming through black. That is for sure. Uh, let's see if I can get some scrolling to work here. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's just do white on, or no, I want to do black oh, on the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, uh, hopefully that's better. Um, it looks the same. It looks the same? But, yeah. Okay, it looks good. It's fine. Wait. All right. Moving <laughs> on. Uh, all right. So, actually, so I have, uh, there's actually a good article uh, on the internet, um, which maybe I'll try to find during the show, um, but about doing this. But basically, I have an HA proxy set up on the VM, which mm -hmm. does proxying for the VM that's running CRC. And then on my local host, I'm using DNS mask to map the name to that that machine, um, which is basically doing the, the HA proxy. Um, oh, so apparently the font change helps. Uh, so that's good. Um, I'm not sure fish shell will change the colors though. Uh, and it would just slow me down even more because I'm so used to bash. Uh, all right, so. It, it was actually like, I used fish shell for a long time. It was actually very easy to pick up. coming. Oh from yeah. Bash. So yeah. I, I did, I switched to ZSH. It's because I, I spent so long as a consultant. I have a very hard time uh, convincing myself to use anything that doesn't get shipped essentially out of the box. Right. Um, because. Yes you know when i was in consulting you know you go to a new client you go to a new customer you go and you have Try to, to install anything you're game right. over yeah. and you're always in trouble um sorry mm -hmm. so yeah all right yeah. so it's always nice when they tell you don't tell you don't install anything and you do it and then you're in trouble yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um okay so uh the first thing we're gonna do is create a new project and hopefully i did it correctly and it looks like i did which is always winning um like i said i have a mental block there 
So here is one of the first problems I ran into. So I am going to show you, I have, um, so the, the images we've been using, right, are primarily coming from the Red Hat Container Catalog. Uh, and the Red Hat Container Catalog for at least some of its content, I'm not sure if it's all or not, but for some of its content, you need to log in to get to it. And so when we do that on localhost, which we do all the time, we just say podman login, and it's uh, what registry.redhat.io, I think. Um, and you type in your username and password, I'm not gonna bother right now, um, to log in. So then whenever I do a podman poll, I'll get the correct base images that I wanna play from. However, uh, I'm gonna be doing all of this from inside OpenShift, so that's not gonna work. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to give my project access to that registry. And the way I do that, the easiest way without showing off my passwords um, is to uh, essentially add this, um, uh, basically create a, what's called a secret in OpenShift. Uh, and, but the way I'm gonna do this is kind of, we were talking about, you can kind of do everything on the command line. So if you notice, I do an OC create, and then I pass minus F, which means use this file. Um, did I not change projects? Oh, well, that, oh, yeah. maybe it's... that command is kind of weird sometimes. Yeah, maybe but it's sometimes, sometimes I just, it, I usually forget to do it. That's oh, no, thing. it's because I copied and pasted and it's wrong. No. Well, that'll do it. Um... OK, so I passed the namespace flag, which meant try to put it into my test one, which is where I'd been kind of working this out. Um, so if I don't pass the namespace flag, then it will go into the namespace I'm in, which is what I actually intended. So now that secret is there. And if we go over to our nice UI here, um, we can see that once it's loaded, um, we can see that now there's a secret here. Uh, and it will, I think it'll hide the password. Yeah, so it hides the passwords. Um, but basically that will let me now pull things from the Red Hat container registry. So um, JP Data asked, just so do you base 64 the file so that it's like just a string basically, or? Um, how did I end up doing it? Uh, let's see, I can't remember now. Um, I was actually, all I basically did was follow uh, the directions on the old uh, docs, um, ah. which, was oh that's what it was. oh actually i can show you it's pretty easy i think let me just see if i can find the window here for a second um to be clear so, in of, he said garbled not encrypted <laughs> that's true obfuscated <laughs> not, not actual yeah obfuscated obfuscation is not security <laughs> right right um so if you go here and so i'm using php i think it's dash seven four um yeah this is another thing I'm trying to figure out. This happens inside OpenShift too, is like, there's two of these. They look exactly alike from this panel, right? But they're different, but you have to like dig into it to find out how they're different, which I find incredibly annoying. Um, and in the, if you look at, um, let's go back over here. I was messing with Operator Hub which is cool and I really like the concept um, when it loads a little faster, but we'll, let's go back here for two seconds so that I can show you how to do this. Uh, what's really nice about each of these pages is not only does it tell you like what it is and then how to use it, which is all this stuff down here, um, but then it'll actually show you the Docker file and we went through the packages one time for one of the uh, things we were talking about so we could see what was already included, all that stuff. So you get all that cool information but then there's also this get this image. Mm -hmm. And so basically I just follow these directions right here, which is how to get that YAML file. So it's basically this um, and getting the poll secret. Um, and to get the poll secret, you, you have to create a registry order. service account and then you go yeah. and get the poll secret. Um, and it was, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and it's, uh, you know, relatively generic. So uh yeah so it worked out pretty well for me um but this is just kind of going back to my other point uh was it this one there was something oh yeah so again see if i put in postgres 
So yeah, there's this one, which is different from the two from Crunchy. Um, and so I get this marketplace community and then no flag. And it's kind of like, I, I, I really wish it, and maybe I'm gonna talk to the uh, developers for this, but you know, be nice to have a little bit more information on these little panels about how they're different. Um, this is actually not the, the worst one. I've seen other ones where there's basically just no difference between the panels, um, which I find confusing because I'm not very bright. Um, so going back to uh, where we were, um, sorry. I'm answering questions in chat real quick. Oh, Unless cool. you want to ask it on air, let's just ask it on air. Sure. Wouldn't the Relate version have a whole bunch of you know more packages essentially than the Sundown UBI image? Uh, UBI is also attributable, whereas oh. the Relate version is not. I actually searched for the wrong one. Um, I think ah. I'm using the UBI 8.1. Uh, okay. Yeah. Not rel. Okay, got it. That makes sense. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm almost positive it's pulling the other one. So let's see. Wait, am I in the right place? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's actually the UBI 8. And that's actually going to get to a point uh, that that another challenge I ran into that I wanted to mention. Um, <clears throat> so, okay, now we have our project uh, and we have um, our like pull secret essentially so that we can uh, get stuff from a, a locked registry. Um, and Chris had to look the world up. Or is that word? Thing? Sorry, oh. I had to look that word up. <laughs> uh, the, I can't even say it in a <laughs> it's some inanatomiers. I don't even know. Um, but basically, yeah, it's a mirror image essentially. Yeah, oh, that's a that's a good word. It's like item potent. I like saying the word item potent. Yeah, um, item potent is kind of probably more what he was going for. But yeah. No, maybe. Um, <laughs> all right. So for this project, we're going to need a database as well as our like PHP and Apache. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to kind of show you in the console how to get our database. We are not going to use an operator for this, um, mostly because I wanted to use Maria. Um, ah. And so going. But there's back, a Maria operator. Yeah. There wasn't one available. I don't know why. I thought there was too. Um, huh. I thought there so, was. So. Yeah, it's something we'll have to investigate as well. Um, so, cluster. <laughs> yeah. I uh. was using this one. Um, and so, what I need to do is grab, just to kind of show you how I did it. Um, I thought there was a nice, like, whole thing. Oh, here it is. Um, so, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem to find it correctly if I only use the rel 8. MariaDB-103 part, okay. um, you know, so on its lookup, but one of the nice things I like about it is that it validates it, that it came through. Um, and so it does tell you, hey, it, I actually found it. Um, this I found amusing too, is that uh, we can also set the icon so that it looks pretty. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of open source icons in there. Um, and so let's just call this next cloud DB. Then if we decide that um, we don't want to use Maria and we want to do something else later, uh, we can change a little bit less. Um, and then I don't think this matters as much, um, but let's do the same thing. And hopefully it's not going to get too angry with us for the mapping the same. And one thing with our database is we don't want it to be publicly accessible, right? We only want um, our web server to be able to access it. So we don't want to create a route to the application itself. So, and then if you notice, I switched from the default deployment, which will kind of immediately like push it out um, and just do the deployment config mm. because uh, we would like it to have persistent storage. Yes. Uh, so there's in, probably in other ways. Sorry? In theory, we would like in it theory. to have. Uh, yeah. yeah, the first time I did it, and I was like, oh, well, I can I can keep my test one around in case I run into problems on the show, but I'm going to shut it down so I can get the resources back, right? And then I spun it back up, and I was like, oh, persistent database would make this work a little better. I did find a MariaDB operator in operatorhub.io. It's, it's a community contribution version. That's so I wonder if my we OpenShift is set up to be not consuming community is kind of what I was wondering. Support. Um, 
I think is like the biggest thing, right? Like they have to yeah. be supportable things. If it's no, displayed. but I wonder if there's like some flag set somewhere that says ignore community edition. Oh, stuff I have no idea. In my I don't think so. That I haven't uh, figured out. See. I just think maybe it's just not included. Right. No, there's yeah. a community set. Let's see here. 